Got home from Afghanistan and life came at me pretty rough and hard. I was drinking, doing every drug I could do. I didn't think that I could live a few days in a row without alcohol and still be happy. Went to rehab and gained some perspective and learned some tools of recovery and finding real joy and real happiness. And a lot of that for me is these places. Desolation is like the closest you can come to heaven. It's nothing that you can describe. It's something that when you're there, you're there. Yeah, this is the greatest place ever. I mean, this place saved my life in a lot of ways. Well, actually, it really did save my life. I've seen a hundred shrinks. I've taken all the antidepressants and all the bull crap in the world, right? taking it all and until I came down these canyons again and and found this this emotional release that I have when I'm down here it's such a place of healing for me you know I mean and without it I'd be in the ground for sure or at the bottom of a bottle when you look at a canyon that's you know 2,000 feet above you and you're just this little guy floating in this river and and it's pushing you where it wants to take you in, and, and you realize that you're just here and you got to make the best of it I don't know how I can even explain it. It's, it's just the greatest place in the world, for me, anyway. Well, first, he was dating my friend, and he had a bad reputation, so I told her that she shouldn't date him because he's kind of a naughty boy. And then he asked me out of the blue one time, and that was it. After that first date, it was over. There was no going back after that. Well, we were engaged in April, and then we got married in July, and then he came home in November and said he joined the Marine Corps. Yeah, I got an amazing wife. She's been with me through a lot of crap, and I love her. Um, four rad kids that are better than I am or better than I ever thought I could be. Yeah, they're super cool, for sure. Yeah, mouthy as can be, holy crap. They'll tease you, especially if they find a little weakness in you, my little girl, woo. They'll tease you forever, it's funny. <laughs> you guys had to uh, describe your dad in one word that is not bald, <laughs> what would it be? Um, funny. Hilarious, probably. Awesome. Serious. A good like, salsa maker. He's super strong. And he's handsome. He's handsome. <laughs> um, he has a nice head. <laughs> <laughs> if I could say anything that represents our family, it's being outside. It's the times where my kids don't fight and we get along and they make up dumb games to pass the time and that's where our family is most peaceful. Been bringing my kids down the river since they were old enough to be on the river and they've grown up here and this is like our playground for them and our spiritual place for them. Seeing those kids swimming in the river and camping and painting toenails you know, on the beach, stuff like that. Priceless, man, priceless, for sure. Energy has always been a catalyst for invention. 
There wouldn't be computers, there wouldn't be test tubes, there wouldn't be microscopes, there wouldn't be all the stuff that this natural resource that we have in our country provides. Yep. Okay. Bye. I'm a company man for an oil company, so I manage a drilling rig um, from start to finish drilling these horizontal Bakken wells here in North Dakota. We need this resource. It's a very powerful resource. It's part of our life, and it's something that we have to come to grips with as environmentalists, that until it changes, this is what we have. We can use this energy to propel us to the next form of energy that's gonna power our world. I remember as a kid, I was on a rig, and you could see arches. You know, and I remember just sitting back going, man, do we really need to be here? Is this really an acceptable place to be drilling for oil? I'm like a hippie in the oil field. You know, they totally think I'm a dirtbag hippie. And then I come out here in the river and they're like, oh, this guy's a cool guy. What do you do in the winter? And I'm like, I work on drilling rigs and I get this. I really feel like sometimes I'm not part of either community. He talks very little about what happened in Afghanistan with me, like very little. For 15 years or so, he had all this like pent up anger and confusion of if what he did was even worth it. But after the trip with Stacy Bear, he came back lighter. I think it was empowering to him to realize he wasn't alone. The Sierra Club sponsors uh, scholarships for veterans to go to guide school. I had the chance to go, and uh, I, I mean, we met this like this big, burly dude, right? Who's kind of standing off in the corner, kind of a frightening individual when you first meet him. It just kind of has a resting, I'm gonna kill you face. And uh, that was Garrett, and he's awesome. There's nothing about that guy that's not just 100% badassery. Did a trip with Stacy. And we were talking and we we're, you know, going through our veteran blah, 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 bull crap that we do. And I was bitching and moaning about the government and things I didn't agree with and this and that and whatever. And I said, I don't even know what I fought for. And we were sitting in the middle of Split Mountain Canyon, I think it was. He just, he just looks up and he goes, we fought for this, man. This is what we fought for. Every veteran fought for this. When we go to fight for our country, what we fight for isn't just a philosophy. Democracy and liberty and justice are not abstract values. They have physical representation, and this is it. I'm very protective of this place. I feel that when I go meet my creator, he's gonna be upset at me if I didn't take advantage and didn't protect and didn't love the thing that he gave me. With all of my craziness and everything, being a teacher and a full-time mom and Garrett's gone all the time, I need that reset button just as much. Without those places, our family really wouldn't exist. But through all the pain of the past, of Garrett going to Afghanistan, of it's the only solace that I've been able to find and our family's been able to find. It was our healing, it was, now I'm gonna get emotional, it was what saved our family. You know, the hippies and the rednecks need to come together and figure this stuff out. We have two resources that we're looking at. We're looking at the oil and the gas resource and then we're also looking at this resource, this beauty that we have. Oil and gas is all over this joint, but this place here, this is special. We fought for canyon lands. We fought for arches. We fought for dinosaur and Yellowstone and Yosemite and all these places. 
no place else equalizes us as Americans as the wilderness does. I would consider Garrett one of my best friends. He doesn't fit in the box that I think a lot of people put a veteran or an outdoorsman or an environmentalist, but he's all those things. And a father and a husband and a friend and, and a warrior. He's definitely a warrior. I want my kids, I want my grandkids, I want my great grandkids to come down here and look at this. I need to know that that's what I've left behind. You know, I'm not a rich guy. I'm not gonna leave them anything, maybe some bills. But I can leave them with the appreciation and the love of this place. And if it's gone, what am I gonna leave them?